And back at the side along with Sandy Jordan is Neil Berry at midfield at number five with Gary Mackay on the bench. Celtic quite unchanged from last week. That's a side that started the game, although, as you probably know, Danny McGrain went off at halftime. And they are really packed in. The official attendance, just over 27,000. An all-ticket crowd, full of expectancy and colour. A really perfect afternoon for cup tie football and a marvellous atmosphere inside Tankcastle, as you would expect. The game started there by George Cumming from Kaluk. Should have been Kenny Hope, but there has been a change. And the crowd are still pouring in. I would imagine that even with the experience of the players I was talking about at the start, there are a lot of nerves. Nobody's immune from that. Teams could be separated last week at Parkhead, although in truth, Hearts finished the stronger side. pale sunshine out at the moment but it is very welcome Aiken and Aiken as usual will be in the thick of it this afternoon I'm sure he's shrugged off the disappointment of Wednesday night and that international put it all behind him a bit of climbing there by the ex-Celtic player Roddy McDonald Any side would love a quick goal in a cup tie. Brian McClare with a marvellous first half last week and he tries to curl it round. Not a bad effort by McClare. There must have been a lot of between himself and the goal. Well, as I said, the crowd is still pouring. The Celtic and away down at the other side is well populated as well, not surprisingly. Robertson. Trying definitely hard to get away from his marker. Whitaker. Bonner has committed himself and rightly and confidently. Beautiful touch. Henry Smith. Brilliant touch there by Johnson and the goalkeeper. Who, as I said, has had a superb save last week when it mattered. Very alert indeed, or else that man would have plonked it in the back of the net. McDonald having a very good game against his old club. Whitaker unsettled. couldn't get it down and Sandy Clark took his eye off it and there's offside as the Hearts defence stepped out once again Clark very useful in the air a oh, classic example of a young man keeping his eye on the ball not deceived by the twist of Robertson and there is White Ball still in play, and Johnson has it. Johnson looking very sharp this afternoon. Did well to get that across, and there is Kiddo. Plenty of time to compose himself. McLeod. Throw to Celtic. And Johnson is still suffering. Limping slightly. Grant on his own. Nice reverse one. McAnally with a chance! Now watch McAnally. 
He really didn't have very much time at all to make up his mind. Brilliant ball initially by Grant. Down it came, an awkward angle, an awkward height, and it took a coat of paint off. While the feature of this game, I would have thought, is the aerial power of both teams. Defense. Look at this, that long high ball being used a lot. Loud draws from the heart support that Robertson had been fouled by Roy Aiken. Referee just turned his back on that. Free kick. And Hart beginning to pick up the pace of it. Looks as if they were drifting out of this match. And Jardin will take this. Towards McDonald and it's a post. And oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Wayne Foster. A superb header there by McDonald. Great judgment here by the big defender. Look at that. Desperately unlucky. And it was left to Foster, but the attendance of the Celtic player and it went right into the crowd to safety. Only Clark coming towards him. Cahoon. Well, like many others, he's slipping on this pitch. Seems to have a rather soft texture, and that, I would have thought, was a free kick. I really do think that Robertson was fouled there. There he is again. Clark. Very weak one, too. And Sandy Jordan showing he still has pace to get back quickly. Would you believe 106 goals for his club? Clark looking for a corner there, I think. We did well to turn, and it's brilliantly saved there. Oh, superb piece of defensive work by Danny McGrain. That would have gone in the back of the net if he had not stretched himself to his limit. Great play there by Clark, getting round in the chip. Now watch this majestic effort there by McGrain. Or else Wayne Foster would have got the opening goal of the game. There's free kick. Right in the middle of the box. There's a little Assistance and climbing up there by Morris Johnson, and that will be a free kick. Berry. A lot of Hearts moves originating on this right wing. But they are finding it very difficult. I mean, they're setting themselves up quite well on occasion, but the final ball into the penalty area has been largely disappointing. And uh, full credit to Celtic for the way they're dovetailing the defence. Well, this big man will be delighted to be playing the way he is against his former club. And there goes the halftime whistle for what, generally speaking, has been a disappointing game. There's always the fear that with uh, so much pre-match publicity that you get a kind of anti-climax, and I think that is largely what has happened the players seem to have been affected there's a lot of nerves out there today it's been rather negative and that single instance when mcdonald draws majestically to head against the post is the only one that's uh, raised the temperatures really um just once or twice we've had last minute tackles by defenders uh, danny mcgrain of course in front of goal but it's been a lot of huff and puff without too much menace as they go in goalless That isn't the blizzard, it's a heart support waiting for the start of the second half and surely they will try to get something special out of their side. 
not just by waving scars, but warbling the throats as well. And at the other end, perhaps they would traditional holding up of the scars by the Celtic support and we're perhaps getting more atmosphere at halftime than we did throughout the first half well we had a marvellous atmosphere at halftime supporters waiting expectantly for the teams to come back on and I think in the very demonstrations indicated they want something more out of this game I don't think I'm doing it an injustice to say it's one of these matches which quite clearly indicate that both sets of players are scared of losing. It means so much. I think that has very badly affected them. And Savannah one down and McInerney might have gone for that himself. Clark. Cahoon. McGrain, North side, uh, and Smith. Henry Smith, of course, who was the substitute goalkeeper of Wednesday night. There's Morris Johnson, who was in the squad. Knows Henry well. Next day has been very closely marked in this game. In goes Whitaker. Kept in well. Very Foster. As Aiken with it, and that should be to Bonner. Well judged. Now Rogan. Plenty space for him on the far side. Beautifully dispatched. Jardin, cool as ever. There's a bad ball on the defence for Clare. On to Johnson, and he was almost through. And there's no use to Hart. Clare's complaining to the referee. He hadn't blown. And Johnson was in a very menacing position indeed. Uh, just as well for one of the clouds to try from that angle. Well, he certainly misjudged it, but it will take something unusual to break this deadlock. And as I say, McLeod quite entitled to shoot from there. Clark. There's a run forward. Foster and Aiken and appeals for hands. Loud, loud appeal. Hearts players incensed by that, and Clark is restraining them. Hearts get a corner kick, and they were shouting for a penalty. And down it went, an excellent ball. And that was outside the box. Oh, Bonner really makes mistakes with a ball like that. Jordan, Clark, McLeod. That was meant for Clark. Black. There's Aiken. Perry. Robertson. And I think Rogan in intercepting there, knocked it against the Hearts player. He had to be in there very quickly, and Robertson is now beginning to look very dangerous again. And the young Irishman, look at that play by Clark again, excellent. Look at the Irishman in there very quickly indeed, the referee says that was a deflection. through McDonald's mind there. Otto McLeod, Grant, and McGray. 
He's only come forward once in his game. There's McClare. Henry Smith hesitated and away by Jardin. Clark, beautiful header. Look at all that space. Oh, Clark. Oh, he took it too directly. Aiken did very well to plug that gap. Although I do think Clark could have restrained himself just slightly, parted with it too quickly. The cloud. Better face of the game now, this. Flowing from one end to the other. In steps Foster, though. And there's Sandy Clark, brought that down beautifully. Looking for support inside, there it is, Black. No, no, no. One or two hearts, uh, players disappointed in that final ball there. Notably, Cahoon, who was away wide and there was nobody near him. But Kenny Black, uh, having said that, can dig them in very hard from there. Offside, McAnally. Robertson and steps Grant again. Corner after this, and so is Foster. There's Black, and it's off the bar by Rogan. Rogan almost scoring a spectacular goal against his own side. Great ball here by Vendel. Watch the Irishman hammering that in. That would have been one of the most spectacular goals I've ever seen. And then the save by Bonner. Quite incredible. Up goes McDonald. There's Bonner. And Clark needed a chip. It was too direct. He needed a calm head there to chip the goalkeeper. Well, this is an unusual afternoon. It's now about seven minutes past five. And this game has still oh, about 12 minutes to run. Most unusual. That's towards Clark. Neatly enough back. McGugan was there. And really Hart, with the advantage of playing at home, really have to give everything in this last uh, 10 minutes or so. Kid and brought down. I think the referee's blown. Yes, it's a free kick. Free kick to Hawks. And with it, there's a deflection, it's in. <laughs> Robertson. Exactly ten minutes to go. Hearts are in the lead. Well, I think there was a decided deflection here, but watch Robertson. And there was the touch, and Bonner couldn't get near it. It came off a Celtic shoulder. But beautifully placed, nevertheless, by Robertson. Hearts in the lead. There's Rogan putting it in. McStay and offside. On the line, Clark. 
supporters have not decided to sing out the remaining minutes. It's not too surprising. Here's Robertson. Robertson, a brilliant run. Brilliantly done, and Andy Watson's almost there. Superb. One of the best runs of the match. Gary Mackay with Aiken. That was a magnificent run by Robertson. Not only had he to go at pace, he had to shield the ball as well. And ultimately, he tried to curl it round the goalkeeper. Well, I think he's king of the castle. Seconds remaining. And there goes the final whistle, Hearts have got through to the quarter-final of the Scottish Cup where they will now play Motherwell. I think it's the first time I've ever been able to say that at the end of a match exactly which team they'll be playing because the draw was made a few minutes ago and Hearts deservedly through for a thoroughly professional second-half performance. They were always the better side there, always at the edge. And John Robertson, number 11, surrounded by crowd and players and Henry Smith in exultation, going up the tunnel, the man whose free kick got hearts through. There may have been a deflection, a slight one, but it was brilliantly done, and there is a great gesture, the man of the man.